Hi, my name is Eileen Yang, and today I'll be doing my ceramic historical research project on Chinese ceramic. Specifically, I'll be doing Chinese blue and white porcelain. As you can see from the examples I have here, this type of porcelain was used mainly to make vases and bowls. However, some teacups and teapots were also made with this kind of porcelain. This is the who, where, and when of blue and white porcelain. Who? Blue and white porcelain was used by Chinese royalty and their court, including nobles, officials, and other high-ranking people. Where? As the name suggests, this porcelain was made in China. Notably, the town of Jingdezhen was the center of porcelain production in China and remains so to this day. When? The earliest known pieces of blue and white porcelain date back to the 1st century CE. Production reached its peak in the 14th century CE, although it was still made for a while afterwards. Blue and white porcelain was a very important export for China. Even today, this type of porcelain is inextricably linked to China in people's minds. It is interesting to note, however, that the attitude of Chinese nobility towards blue and white porcelain was not always favorable. Even so, it remained popular outside of China, where nations like Japan, which had porcelain vaguely known as somitsuke, and the Netherlands, creators of the famous Delft ware, copied Chinese designs and colors. Blue and white porcelain, possibly the most famous type of Chinese porcelain, was made for several reasons, two of which are for court use and for export. As an export, blue and white porcelain was mostly shipped to European markets, where high demand for porcelain, combined with the fact that only the Chinese knew how to make porcelain, drove prices through the roof. Traditionally, blue and white porcelain was made with blue pigment only, as the name denotes. Pieces were made from clay that turned white after firing. Before the piece was put into the kiln, the blue coloring, made from cobalt that was sourced from Persia or what is now Iran, was applied and a clear glaze brushed over. This is a technique known as underglazing. In addition to being seen as a sign of wealth, cobalt had the advantage of being able to withstand the high temperatures needed to fire porcelain, unlike most other pigments of the time. However, if desired, more glazes can be applied after the firing, in which case the piece must go back in the kiln to be fired a second time at a lower temperature, so that the glaze stays on. These are some of the references I used while researching Chinese blue and white porcelain.